Hi, my name is Ethan Robillard, and this is my NCOMP 100 Programming Contest Submission in the Limited category. This program creates an algorithm which solves a 2x2 two two Rubik's Cube. The cube itself consists of eight individual connected pieces, each with three colors. To input the scrambled cube into MATLAB, the user enters the colors of each face, starting at the top left corner, going clockwise. Initially, I used input functions for this process. However, if the user made a mistake, they would be unable to go back and fix it. In the second version of my code, I implemented the input DLG function to improve this process. Each corner piece contains one color from each of three faces. The program uses the user input to assign the colors of each face to the corresponding corner pieces of the cube. It then combines them into this variable in which the letters represent pieces of the cube as shown in this diagram. The cube has six layers which can rotate. Top and bottom, right and left, front and back. When I do a 90 degree cube rotation, it's the same as changing the position and orientation of four corner pieces. This piece moves here, this piece moves here, etc. I represented cube rotations in my program using functions. Each function takes the variable cube and changes the position and orientation of the colors of four pieces of the cube, which correspond to what would occur if you perform this rotation. I wrote subfunctions corresponding to 90 degree clockwise rotations, indicated by a single letter, 90 degree counterclockwise rotations, indicated by a C following the letter, and 180 degree rotations, indicated by the two following the letter, for each layer of the, that can be rotated. To briefly demonstrate how I solve the first half of the cube, I choose a cube, which I assume to be in the correct orientation and position, and I look for the piece that goes next to the cube, which is right here. And I can place that cube next to my original using a simple series of turns, which is quite intuitive. Um, and then I continue on. I, my program does essentially the same thing. It chooses an initial cube, using a while loop, loops through the rest of the cubes to find the piece that goes next to this cube, determines where that piece is locating, located, which letter it corresponds to, and based on that position, uses the subfunctions corresponding to the cube rotations to insert this pe the piece next to the original piece and it repeats this for the next two cubes until half of the cube is complete. Because the second half is so difficult to complete intuitively, I used predetermined algorithms which are chosen depending on the orientation of a select few pieces of the top layer. I used if statements to compare the orientation of my cube to the orientation required to use the algorithm to solve the second half. I made modifications if necessary and once I determined which algorithm to use, it was just a matter of applying a series of subfunctions corresponding to that algorithm. At the beginning of my code, I introduced a global variable called solution. When any of the subfunctions are used, they add a string to the variable solution, which indicates that the subfunction has been used. The resulting solution is a combination of all the algorithms performed. However, it contains some unnecessary moves, such as two counterclockwise rotations, which can be replaced with the one 180-degree rotation, or four clockwise rotations, which can be removed altogether. Initially, I struggled quite a bit when trying to simplify the solution, as I tried to replace the strings with numbers and manipulate those numbers, and it ended up being a long, complex mess that never ended up working out. It became much, much easier once we covered string manipulations in class. I initially tried the string replace function, however this did not work when a subfunction was repeated three or more times due to string indexing, so I, instead I used the, re the replace function. And there you have it. I wrote the entire program independently, which was overwhelming when I started, but it became much easier after learning about functions. The biggest challenge was transforming the scrambled cube into something that MATLAB could work with, such as figuring out how the user should input the scrambled cube, as well as what to do with the input, how to best organize the pieces. Even after my data was put in the cube function, it was quite difficult to visualize what position the cube's in just by reading a series of letters. I included global variables in my code before I learned about the potential drawbacks. However, I found them quite useful in this case for my cube and solution variables, 
which could be altered directly by the subfunctions. Finally, I got a lot of practice in debugging due to the length of the code and the many different inputs abilities.